welcome gopan great to have you here thank you thanks anita um so gopan before we begin i would be great if you could tell us about your role at uh, secure works no absolutely so uh, i'm i'm responsible for the overall business development for secure works in the region so my official title is general manager for secure works for middle east turkey and africa I've been with secure works for this is my ninth year with secure works i was the first employee of secure works in the region i was doing pre sales for predominantly most part of my career uh, my 18th year in information security my background has been in information security and uh, currently i'm responsible for the business development for secure works for the middle east turkey and africa region right uh now tell us about secure works and its presence in the region um like i said 9 years ago is when we started here proactively before that we were kind of having some remote clients in the region when i started we were two employees but now we are 30 30 we got a, a significant presence from the go to market team uh, sales pre sales architects we also have incident responders penetration testers uh, program managers customer success managers implementation engineers so it's a it's a it's a significant team Uh, now, uh, which is part of uh, the region, I've distributed the region into geographies as such. So we got uh, people responsible for uh, Middle East as such from a GCC perspective, for Saudi Arabia, for UAE, for Gulf, and then also from uh, Africa, uh, South Africa, that side of things as well. Now, um, coming to cyberspace, we all know that risks have increased manifold, particularly since the pandemic. So now what do you think are some of the cyber risks that organizations are prone to today and how well protected or prepared are they to deal with these risks? Um again I personally think ransomware continue to become uh, one of the number one threats organizations face today. Mm-hmm. Right? So the risk can be on multiple fronts there could be insider threats uh, threat actors continue their effort to obtain data that fuels e crime or espionage or some of that kind of things we the the landscape moves at a pace of its own right both simultaneously mm-hmm. quick and slow now this year uh, it will be 5 years since wanna cry and in many ways it feels like this very little has changed right so uh, unfortunately i'm very unfortunate to say this but i haven't seen so much of learning from a organization side of things in last 5 years what what has happened right the threat actors will still be seeking to gain political and economical advantage through espionage or crime groups will be still looking at the most efficient ways to make money and new vulnerabilities to continue to emerge i don't see anything anything of that sort stopping at all and companies have got little control on many of these aspects right what is within their gift is how they approach and invest in cyber security that's the only thing they can control they cannot control how threat actors are behaving and they will continue to evolve now one thing which we always say to customers is that they must guess the fundamentals right right whether it is your multi factor authentication whether it is your patching making sure that you you are not leaving the back door wide open right so over the last year there have been a number of high profile attacks but we are still seeing too few companies taking the action needed to not only close the back door but lock it so more need to be done cyber resilience takes time investment and resources so it's not an end destination or a box you can tick but it's an ongoing journey absolutely uh, but do you think organizations in the region have the actual visibility to detect threats that are most relevant to them or what's lacking here if they don't So Anita, this is a multi-layered question, right? So, yeah. so some organizations might feel that they are able to detect threats, but I talk with a uh, lots of companies in this position uh, to to chief information security officers who are unable to effectively prioritize them from a threat perspective. Now, by this, I mean they have got so many alerts going off, but no way of categorizing the threats in relation to the risk they pose to the business. That's a real problem. as mm. resources can be distracted resolving low level threats mm. while inadvertently allowing a more serious attack to advance right so mm-hmm. so the question then becomes how can companies ensure that they aren't in this position mm-hmm. so so firstly is companies need to prepare to to be prepared they need to understand where their weaknesses and vulnerabilities are so once they know this they can move to the step to which it involves seeking to deploy preventive measures to block what they can from getting into their organization and ensure mm-hmm. that they are proactively scanning for vulnerabilities and and thirdly i think it is important to ensure that your systems are set up to help you to detect threats right so the earlier you detect the better it is 
right so for you to respond i think i think it is mentioned that the average dwell time is 212 days uh, for a threat going undetected in an organization which is almost like more than more than 6 months right so that is a very very serious challenge so i i believe there is lots of room to improve on that end right um now if we look at the most common approach to security today it's a layered one um businesses deploy multiple solutions such as um, edr nta sim for in depth defense do you actually think this is adequate or are there limitations to this uh, approach so ironically uh, i did a talk in jisec mm-hmm. this year mm-hmm. and the title mm-hmm. of my talk was uh, defense in concert mm-hmm. right so moving away from defense in depth right now to your question about layering your security approach it can feel that you are effectively double locking your windows and doors but mm. that isn't always the case right by deploying a lots of point solutions it can be really hard to understand what is going on in your network because you don't have one holistic view you can't look at the network through one single pane of glass and effectively assess your threat levels because mm-hmm. the vendor's architecture is not set up or architected to ingest and correlate all the disparate data coming from across the different vendors so mm-hmm. i personally i personally believe that the defense in depth as a concept is not relevant anymore it was relevant 5 or 6 years ago right mm-hmm. now as secureworks we talk about defense in concert so this was introduced by our cto probably 4 or 5 years ago a concept called defense in concert and uh, i i would be continuing to be an advocate of that concept called defense in concert where instead of looking at point solutions you have to look at what you have already invested in how we can make sure that they are all talking to each other and work in tandem right how you talk about a concert so it has to work that way that that would be my my advice to cso's on this right uh, absolutely now we hear a lot of talk about proactive defense as opposed to reactive defense now what what does what in your opinion does this look like proactive defense as the name suggests proactive defense means not waiting for the threat so we are not waiting for something bad to happen right it means that you go proactively looking for risk to mitigate it now uh, in my view proactive companies are in seeking to tick a box and move on they know that cyber resilience is a continual process like i was mentioning earlier it is a journey not a destination right right as such they undertake measures such as seeking out vulnerabilities before their adversaries so an adversary detecting a vulnerability you should be before the adversary you should know that hey there is a vulnerability existing i need to make sure that i'm patching this before somebody else finds some of the proactive measures i've seen mature organizations doing continuous threat hunting one example right you are not waiting for something bad to happen but you continuously do threat hunting with your organization you are not doing yeah. threat hunting like once in 6 months or once in mm. a year you mm. do it on a continuous basis so that you know that there is something bad happening you are absolutely looking into it right right now all this talk of uh, prevention and detection what happens if there's an actual incident uh, are companies in the region prepared to deal with this again i would like to classify this into uh, because i don't want to give a broad uh, mm. uh, answer with all companies right so i would say proactive companies and reactive companies the right. proactive companies will well be really equipped because they will have the right policies and procedures in place they, when there is a complex breach they will make sure that their incident response plans are up to date okay so they are pretty good with how they are doing tabletop exercise how they are doing a drill exercise how they are doing war gaming i've seen the companies doing that really well right so that is good on the other hand when you look at reactive companies less so right there is a serious risk because you're first of all you are you are not updating your incident response plan so when you are in the middle of an incident you take your incident response plan and you if you got any and then you turn the pages that ah okay or oh, this person has left the business Three months ago, and he was supposed to do this, right? So I didn't know that. So they have not updated this. They have not tested their DR. So, in my view, response is not just about dealing with the threat at hand. It's about how you engage your stakeholders to retain their trust. Because you may be working with your your customers. You want want to how transparently you communicate with them, how quickly, how helpful the advice you offer them. All that is important, right? So, so again, I don't want to put one single bucket to all companies in the region. There are both categories, right? Proactive and reactive, and that's how they would handle this. 
Right. Uh, now let's come to secure works. How does secure works uh, step in as far as response to actual incidents or breaches uh, go? Uh, tell us about secure works approach to the whole changing threat defense dynamics. Two parts to the question. So one is we got a world class incident response team, right? If something happens, you don't have to be a customer of secure works in order for us to help you. Right? Right. On our website, there is a phone number. Organization can call us in order to speak with our incident response team. As we speak today, we got 103 incident responders globally. We got uh, Andrew Nind, who heads our incident response team in the region. He's based in Dubai. He has got a team of incident responders in the region. So we have we can have people help customers when they are in the middle of a crisis, regardless of whether they are a customer or not. They can always reach to secure. Right. Now, in terms of the our approach to threat defense dynamics, our platform Tage is XDR. So, which will provide a holistic visibility and detection capabilities across an organization's entire technology estate, whether it is okay. endpoint, network, or cloud. Right now, what does this mean? Is a true XDR would need effective analytics beyond a single control. Right, it needs right. to ingest your uh, telemetry from endpoint, network, email, cloud. You name it. We need to collect that, make sure that there is a correlation happening between each other, and then get an alert or an investigation to a client. There is something serious you have to consider, and there is also the human factor to consider with XDR, right? So you've got a fully operational, dedicated threat intelligence team working with our data scientists to research and incorporate behavioral threat patterns. The human factor to develop appropriate detection analytics, and a true XDR platform marries. Big data, intelligent security analytics, live threat context, and the best of human engineering and SecOps in order to provide prevention, detection, and response that extends well beyond the endpoint. I, I hope that made sense. Oh, it does. It does. It does. Um, thanks, Gopan. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Anita. Pleasure talking. To you.